Let's begin by talking about what happened, what actually happened as far as we know at this point. On Monday afternoon, a 30-year-old uh, mentally ill vagrant named Jordan Neely, who also happens to be black, boarded a subway train in New York City and began harassing the passengers. Witnesses described Neely as hostile and erratic. He was apparently yelling and carrying on, screaming that he's, quote, ready to die and, quote, doesn't mind going to jail and, uh, quote, will hurt anyone on this train. Um, this was not Neely's first foray into this territory. He was a man with 44 prior arrests with charges ranging from assault to drug-related offenses. He also had an open warrant for a felony assault dating back to 2021. That was an open warrant at the time uh, that this all happened. Multiple people on social media have since reported that um, their own, uh, uh, you know, they've, ha they've had their own alleged run-ins with Neely, who, according to these reports, was known to harass and threaten passengers. In other words, Neely was yet another violent repeat criminal who had been essentially granted free reign over the subway system where crime has skyrocketed over the last few years as commuters are frequently accosted, mugged, assaulted, even raped and killed. This is not just the case in the New York City subway system, but in the city as a whole and in major cities all across the country, as we know. But on the F train on Monday afternoon, some of the passengers decided that they had enough. Rather than sitting there and waiting for Neely to lash out violently, uh, waiting for him to make good on his explicit threats to hurt people, hoping that if he starts physically attacking people that you know maybe they'll be able to intervene before anyone is seriously hurt or killed. Instead of that, a few passengers stepped up to do what was necessary. At least three Good Samaritans restrained Neely. One man, who's a, a white man and a former Marine, had Neely in a, in a chokehold. Another, a black man, was holding down his arms. They held him down for several minutes, because there was no law enforcement immediately on the scene, and they were in this uh, enclosed, uh, claustrophobic environment, and uh, they, they, were gonna, they weren't going to do that and then just let him go. So they held on to him. Eventually, Neely lost consciousness and died. Police took at least one of the passengers who restrained him, the white man, the Marine, into custody for questioning. They released him sometime later without pressing charges. Now, what you should know is that there were over 10 people, I think it was 11 people in total, who were killed on the New York City subway just last year, along with many more accosted and assaulted. Uh, you don't know any of their names, do you? Many more fell victim to violent crime all over the city. Over 400 people were murdered just in 2022 alone, just in New York City. You probably don't know any of their names either. The problem for those victims is that uh, in a great many of those cases, the perpetrators were black. But as we know, violence carried out by black people, no matter the race of the victim, is not useful to the media or the Democrat Party, which means that those victims must remain nameless and faceless. But in this case, the man who had Jordan Neely in a headlock was white. And that is the only detail the left needs. That's it. They don't need anything else because they can make up the rest. Or they can, they can uh, massage the facts a little bit to get them to the point where they want them. The only absolute fact that they need and that they usually can't lie about is the racial component. Hundreds of black people are killed every single year, year after year, a trail of violence and death and misery that is only getting worse over time, not better, victim after victim, day after day after day. And the left says nothing, does nothing, does not care, does not make martyrs or heroes out of any of these victims, does not demand that we say their names. They wait, and they wait, and they wait, and they have to wait a while until eventually they, they, they uh, come across the extremely rare occurrence where a black man dies allegedly at the hands of a white man, and that is when they leap into action, taking full advantage, which is what has happened here. So protesters, uh, in response to Jordan Neely's death, swarmed the, uh, the New York City subway system yesterday, demanding justice for Jordan Neely. The media went into full George Floyd mode, blatantly racializing the incident, while in real time, and we could see this happening in real time, they started to reshape uh, Jordan Neely himself into something other than the violent career criminal that he actually was. So we could actually, if you were on social media yesterday, you could see this happening in real time as they began to sort of figure out who they want to make this guy into. And in this case, it appears that Neely sometimes dressed like Michael Jackson when he was on the subway 
and he would perform um, unsolicited dance routines, you know, uh, for hoping for tips from people. And this is a fact that, as far as I'm concerned, if anything, makes him even less sympathetic, but, but which the media is using to paint him as some kind of struggling artist, a kind soul who wished only to bring people joy and happiness. And he just wanted to dance for people. He lived to dance. That's all. That's all it was. Many headlines have been published claiming that a white man killed a black Michael Jackson impersonator. That's how they're referring to him in the headlines, as if this is the most important detail about him. A Michael Jackson impersonator was killed. Not a career criminal, not a, not a homeless vagrant, not a mentally ill psychopath. No, not that. A Michael Jackson impersonator. It's, it's you know, almost as if, right, they tackled him to the ground and choked him out for being a Michael Jackson impersonator. Like the impression they want to give you from the headlines is that the passengers on the, on the train got annoyed with him dancing around like Michael Jackson and then tackled him, which is not what happened at all. Democrat politicians have also been activated. AOC, Ayanna Presley, uh, the squad, you know, together have been leading the lynch mob as usual. AOC has been making frantic public statements demanding an arrest and criminal charges Though, uh, though, of course, she doesn't, she doesn't need to wait for any of those things, least of all a conviction to pass down her own verdict, which she has already done. The mayor of New York City has been, to this point, slightly more cautious in his public response. He hasn't come out and actually said that this was a racist murder. Not yet, anyway. And that's not good enough for AOC, who is now demanding that the mayor publicly accuse this Marine of murder. So to be clear, This is an elected official demanding that a citizen who hasn't been arrested uh, or charged be be pronounced guilty of murder without trial, without conviction, or again, without even a criminal charge. She, along with many others on the left, are openly calling for a public lynching of a man who has not been officially accused of committing any crime. The attack on masculinity is no secret. Mainstream media demonizes normal, heterosexual, and masculine men while promoting non-masculine behavior and gender fluidity. Anybody who dares to speak out is quickly labeled a homophobe, sexist, misogynist, and then silenced. Uh, Notably, there are studies coming out that show testosterone levels have been declining for decades, with a 17% drop among 60-year-olds in 2004 compared to 1987. Researchers call these changes alarming, to say the least, and that's why you need to check Black Forest Supplements. The Black Forest Testo Stack is the ultimate solution to help you reclaim your masculinity. It combines the power of three natural supplements to help boost your testosterone levels and improve your overall well-being. Black Forest Supplements is dedicated to bringing back traditional masculinity and femininity. You can visit blackforestsupplements.com and use code Walsh at checkout for 10% off your order today. Don't let anybody tell you that being strong and confident is a bad thing. That's blackforestsupplements.com and promo code Walsh today. The pro-life battle has finally left D.C. and it's going to the grassroots. As one of the largest pro-life organizations in the world, no one's in a better position than 40 Days for Life to end abortion in a post-Roe America. With 1 million volunteers in 1,500 cities, 40 Days for Life holds peaceful vigils outside abortion facilities. Because of that, they actually have a larger presence in blue states, specifically California. Former abortion clinic directors say that these vigils can cause the abortion no-show rate to go as high as 75%, which is detrimental to their business. And thank God for that. These law-abiding vigils have helped close abortion facilities in San Francisco, Seattle, and Chicago. They're also leading the effort in uh, leading the way in efforts to prevent pharmacies from dispensing chemical abortions. You can support their work and check out their locations, podcast, and free magazine at 40daysforlife.com. The fight for life is uh, certainly not over. It has entered a new phase, uh, but still deeply important. And if you want to learn more, you can go to information, get more information on 40 Days for Life at 40daysforlife.com. Now, it remains to be seen whether they'll be able to fully repeat their George Floyd trick with Jordan Neely, uh, which, you know, means riots, looting, another uh, great racial awakening, quote unquote, an unjust and politically motivated trial and conviction, etc. But that is clearly their goal, and they are on their way towards it right now. But as as these deeply evil forces set to work to make full use of this incident, and to make another white man into a sacrificial victim on the altar of racial justice, what is the actual truth? Right? What, what is the correct response? Who is really at fault? Well, the answer to that last question, I think, will give us the answer to the others. 
And uh, to that, we can say that there are two parties responsible for the death of Jordan Neely. And the first party, we cannot forget, is Jordan Neely himself. Okay, so who is first and foremost to blame for the fact that Jordan Neely is dead today? Well, Jordan Neely is. He may have been mentally ill, but he's also the only person on the planet who can directly decide how he behaves. Okay, there's one person with direct control over that, and it's Jordan Neely. He's the one who harassed a train full of passengers who were just trying to get to or uh, and from work. Uh, he's the one who announced himself explicitly as a threat, a, a threatened to hurt them. He's the one who's lived a life of crime for at least the past decade. It's his actions that precipitated the events that led to his death. If he had not chosen to announce himself as a threat to those around him, if he had not chosen to carry on the way that he did, he would still be alive today. He put the other passengers in a position of having to choose whether to gamble with their safety by allowing him to you know, run around screaming, waiting for him to do something violent, or whether they should step in and subdue him. He put them in that position. But it wasn't just him who put them in that position. The other party responsible is the Democrat Party, um, the political leadership of the city, the justice system, DAs like Alvin Bragg in Manhattan, who have made the conscious decision to keep men like Jordan Neely on the street, to continually release these people back into the public, no matter how many dozens of crimes they each commit, until the, until, until the point that they are either killed or they kill someone else. That's the way the justice system now operates. Commit crime, commit crime, crime after crime after crime. Keep them on the street until a death occurs, either their death or somebody else's. And actually, in the latter case where they kill somebody else, they might still stay on the streets even after that. The, the only thing that, that will definitely get them on the street, off the street, is if they're killed. But that's, not, that's a decision that the system has made. Jordan Neely belonged in prison um, or a mental asylum. He had long ago made it clear that he had no interest in being a, uh, you know, a civilized member of society. He was a danger to his community and to himself. And this had been demonstrated time and time again. Jordan Neely could not have been clearer about this. If the system had done what it was supposed to do, if it had gotten him off the street you know, and locked him away somewhere, he would be alive today. But the left does not want to prosecute crime because crime is committed in a racially disproportionate way. It is committed in a racially disproportionate way, which means that prosecutions and convictions and incarcerations will naturally be disproportionate. But the left can't have that, so they would rather let criminals, criminals terrorize you and, and your family. In fact, it's kind of a win-win for them because if they refuse to prosecute criminals, um, they can enact their perverse idea of racial justice by, by keeping these black criminals on the street. And um, because it's only, when it comes to criminal justice reform, that's all they're really concerned about, obviously. Um, and at the same time, they can put honest citizens in a position of having to make very difficult decisions with their lives potentially on the line. And then they can exploit those situations. They can send the mob after, you know, yet another scapegoat and use the chaos they've created to advance their racial narrative. Which is why the one man that I will not blame for this is the man who is getting all of the blame right now. Now, you can argue that it's, uh, it's not wise from a self-preservation standpoint for anyone, especially any white man, to intervene in these kinds of situations anymore. Um, while, the, while the left has engineered a win-win for themselves, for you, it is a lose-lose. Now, if you decide to get involved, either you get hurt in your attempt to protect yourself or potentially killed uh, in your attempt to protect yourself and others, or you prevail in the struggle and then you find yourself pursued by a crazed leftist mob calling for your head. And then if you're arrested and charged, you'll find yourself standing before a New York City jury or a big city jury somewhere else where your conviction will have already been decided before the jury was even selected. 
That's what AOC is up to right now. She wants to assume, she's assuming, probably rightly so, that this innocent man is going to be um, arrested and charged. And so she right now wants, she doesn't want to take any chances. She wants to decide the verdict right now. Pollute the jury pool, have this man labeled a murderer in every headline so that when the, when the trial eventually comes, he's doomed. This makes it extremely dicey, to say the least, to play the uh, Good Samaritan role. But it also makes it all the more heroic. The, the Marine, who at this point, but likely for not much longer, remains nameless, is not only not at fault, not only in the right, but is in fact a hero. This was a heroic action he took. He did what the leaders of his city would not do, what the system refuses to, what the police are not allowed to do anymore in a city like New York City. He was under no moral obligation, nor any legal obligation, to sit silently, obediently, while a psychotic criminal vagrant runs wild, threatening and harassing innocent people. He's not under that obligation. This is an obligation that the left wants to impose on us. They want us to believe that it is our responsibility to helplessly submit ourselves to the whims of every violent scumbag we come across. But it is not so. And so this man took action. He deserves a medal for his actions. In a healthy society, that's what he would get. Yet we don't live in a healthy society. We live in a, in a depraved and confused one which means, tragically, I'm afraid that his reward is likely to be quite different. And that'll do it for uh, this portion of shows. We move over to Members Block. You can become a member today by using code Walsh at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Hope to see you there. If not, talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed.